Okay, I'm back here for a little bit more, friends, to continue on on what I was talking about after Dale's testimony. Um, we were talking about the storm, hurricanes, rather the, uh, the tornadoes in Indiana. And he, this man is describing what happened. He felt the house shake, rise up and slam down, then slide off its foundation. By eight feet, he had later learned. I said, well, here we go, he recalled. I thought I was a goner. After the storm churned by, hail <clears throat> size of baseballs pummeled the area, pockmarking vehicles and smashing their front windshields, so forth. They were bouncing like rubber balls, he said. The tornado drove right through the crossroads at the town center. It hardly touched St. Francis Xavier Catholic Church, but across the street it sheared the roof off the sanctuary of Henryville Community Presbyterian Church. The school compound with 1,400 students in kindergarten through 12th grade was in the bull's eye, but the principals had decided to send the students home earlier than usual. Amazing. We just knew it was time. We just knew it was time, he said. I say it was God, marveled one man. It was really a miracle to have all those children out of here. <clears throat> As a tornado bore down, a bus with 11 children pulled into the parking lot. <clears throat> Troy Albert, the high school principal, yelled, Get in here, get in here. And so they did. Five minutes later, the empty bus rocked across the road, scissored from its chassis, and impaled a cafe. And it goes on, describes uh, more. In nearby Marysville, a hamlet of 40 or 50 homes, nearly every residence was damaged. Some were obliterated. One was lifted off its foundation and deposited in the backyard. It goes on, talks more and more about this. So the people are in a state of shock. I think the whole nation is in a state of shock. 90 tornadoes in just a short period of time. That's truly amazing, unheard of. Okay, years ago I found a book. It's uh, written by Dr. Nick Baggage and associate. It's called Angels Don't Play This Harp. Angels Don't Play This Harp. What's he talking about? He's talking about harp. And if you want to know about, uh, more about this, advances in Tesla technology, just write to me. And uh, my email address is mclute777 at aol.com. And uh, Dale will put that on the top of the screen. Okay. I mentioned about Sunday Laws. Here's a book that was written many years ago, National Sunday Law, and is still being distributed by the author all over the country and all over the world in different languages. And still the Sunday Law has not come. Uh, you hear talk about that, but uh, a lot of people don't think it will ever happen. Well, time will tell for sure, won't it? But these disasters are exciting the people, I think, to consider who is behind it. Here's a book, UFOs, What on Earth is Happening? And uh, I don't have that one to circulate. I don't have that one to pass out to you, but you can check it on the internet and just study on UFOs, who they are and what they're trying to do in this world. Here's a book, God's Not Guilty. And I have other books along the same line about God is not the one that's bringing disaster. Okay, and then my book, Into the Father's Heart, which you can see over there also, and you can read that online or you can write for it. Okay, that's about all I have to say right now. I just wanted to give a quick update. And I have something here I could read. If uh, you think we have more time, Dale, can we go on? Yeah, we have time. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to read some of these. And I was talking to uh, a relative in Indiana, called to see if they were okay. And so they're up there. Uh, north of Indianapolis, so it didn't uh, affect them. <clears throat> the name of this uh, article I wrote <clears throat> many years ago, <clears throat> uh, at about the same time I wrote the first uh, three manuscripts in my book that was turned into and formed or combined to make Into the Father's Heart, I wrote these out as a logical explanation uh, of why God doesn't kill. And it's called 20 Reasons for Believing Jesus Does Not Destroy. And I'm going to share these. If my throat gets tired, maybe Dale can finish them off or I'll finish them off at a later time. Okay, number one. The life of Christ is the fullest revelation of God's character of love. Our precious Lord Jesus never once hurt or killed anyone. 
And this proves what God was life and is like. God does not kill. He's a life God. Number two, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit have never once heard or killed an evil angel, including Satan himself, the chief of the devils. Now, I, I talked there about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as a trinity because at the time I wrote that, I did believe in the Trinity doctrine. Since that time, I have learned more, and now I believe that there are four members of the Godhead, and I've made a tape on that. I've made a segment on that. And you can write if you are upset about that or you don't agree with me. You can write and ask why I believe that particular specific information I just shared. Okay, number three. The sixth commandment, number six, says thou shalt not kill. And it also can mean thou shalt not murder. It's, it's uh, translated from the same Hebrew word, kill or murder. The lawgiver cannot break his own law, or he himself would come under his own condemnation. He would be untrue to his own character, which is a transcript of the very law itself. He must be true to himself and to his own law and character. Our Heavenly Father is not a lawbreaker. And in John 8, 44, he said that Satan was a liar and a murderer. How could Jesus identify and expose Satan as a, as a lawbreaker and then turn around and say, but it's okay for me to break the law? Does our Heavenly Father break the law in order to uphold the law? No, of course not. That would be hypocritical and, uh, of course, would not have any uh, good effect at all in the minds of the people. It would be counterproductive. Number four, God never changes. If Jesus never killed anyone while he was on earth, and we know he never did, and if Jesus' life was the fullest demonstration of God's character, then God has always been just like what Jesus showed him to be like, a life God, not a death God. Hebrews 13, 8, Malachi 3, and verse 6. Number five, it is an irreconcilable, self-negating statement to say that the life giver takes life. The Creator cannot be both a life God and a death God. Satan is a death God, and the sign of his power is Sunday worship. Now, I want to make a point here about these tornadoes. And as far as that goes, hurricanes and all the other aberrations of nature that we see going on from time to time, all of the earth, the imbalance of nature, floods, for example, and uh, volcanoes earthquakes, and so forth. Our Heavenly Father is not doing this. Why would He, the Creator, be, de be destroying His own earth? Does that make any sense at all? And why would our Heavenly Father, who sent and allowed His own beloved Son to come and die on the cross, turn around and be a, a murderer and a killer? Does that make any sense whatsoever, beloved? Of course not. So let's use our brains. Let, let your mind, let your intelligence tell you the truth. Number seven, the Sabbath is the final proof that God is a life God. It proves he gives life and sustains life. It is the central theme of the final message. Okay, the Sabbath shows that, that it's a memorial of creation. And it also shows that God has power to give life. <clears throat> okay, then a, a famous author said in the book Christ Object Lessons, page 84, God destroys no man. Every good and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, James said, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. <clears throat> That's James 1.17. Okay, the next one. The cross of Christ answers every question in the great controversy. The cross is the greatest demonstration of God's love. It proves God was willing to die so we might live. Instead of killing us or letting us die, He came and died in our place, that we might live forever with Him. So we can look forward to heaven. <clears throat> and I'd like to say a com word of comfort to those who have been bereaved over the weekend, beloved. I know that it's a heart-aching loss when your loved ones die. And so you're in grieving. And there's, like Dale said, almost 197, probably more now, as they're uncovering <clears throat> more and more of the debris and finding bodies. And so... I want to say this, that our Heavenly Father knows your loved ones, and when Jesus comes, they will be with you. You will see them again. <clears throat> okay. The cross of Christ answers every question. The cross is the greatest demonstration of God's love. It proves God was willing to die so we might live. 
the next one, number nine. The book of Job, chapters one to three especially, proves that Satan is the destroyer. Number 10, Satan is the one who causes floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, pestilences, and all the aberrations of nature. See Great Controversy 589 and 590. God does not execute anyone, but leaves the sinner to reap what he has sown. That's from Great Controversy, page 35, 36, and 37. Now, number 11, Psalm 103 says, God's angels do not kill, but keep his law, which says thou shalt not kill. Number six, Revelation 7 proves God's angels hold back evil. They do not bring it. God's angels are called destroying angels only because they withdraw and permit evil to come. See Kings, 1 Kings 22, where God's angels are said to lie. Now, this is, uh, this is a story about Micaiah and his prophecy. And he saw the Lord sitting on a throne high. And uh, the uh, host of heaven, the angelic realm about him. And these are his angels, the devil's angels. He's the Lord of this earth. And he's asking their advice how to make and cause Ahab to fall at Ramoth Gilead. And so finally one of his uh, angels came uh, before his throne and said, Okay, I have a good idea, sir. Uh, let's, <clears throat> I will go and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all Ahab's prophets. And Lucifer, Satan, said, you know what? That's the best idea I've heard so far. Go and you will succeed. <clears throat> and then the, uh, the editor or the scribe of that particular chapter of First Kings, the last chapter of the, of the record of the Old Testament there, of that period of time, uh, which uh, some people believe that Jeremiah wrote that, about five or six hundred years before Christ, that uh, the, the scribe there said, Behold, now, look, the Lord has sent an angel, a lying spirit, to cause Ahab to fall. And so even the scribes over there in the Old Testament did not realize the character of God. I mean, look at the life of Solomon, beloved. Look at the life of all those people over there. They didn't know. They didn't understand because truth is progressive from age to age, from century to century, and now from decade to decade, year to year, day by day, we're seeing a contrast between the character of God and the character of the God of this world. So you and myself, each of us have to make a decision whom we will serve because the facts are coming out. The truth is being revealed. Our Heavenly Father loves us. He's not a hurtful. He's not a destroyer. Okay? But you're going to hear more and more, even on the media, that God is causing these events. And then the preachers will take it up. The religious leaders of this country and of the whole world will say, yes, God is angry at us. He's bringing these disasters to wake us up so we will come back to Him. And if we don't obey, we, were all, we will all be dead. So we have to get back to God, and the way they will do that is by enforcing a law called a National Sunday Law. So that is on the horizon, beloved. It's going to come sooner than you realize. Okay, number 12. Angels are sent from the heavenly courts, not to destroy, but to watch over and guard imperiled souls, to save the lost, to bring the strained ones back to the fold. This is from a a book called Review and Herald, May 10th, 1906. For those who think that God's angels actually destroy, right here, God's holy angels do not destroy. Angels are sent from the heavenly courts not to destroy, but to watch over and guard imperiled souls. I sent this to a fellow researcher who doesn't agree with me on some of the seven levels here, and uh, he was really shocked. He had never read that before, so he was happy to get that because he was working on level one trying to prove God doesn't kill but he didn't agree with me in level two and three and so forth but I was willing to share that with him and he thanked me for it and was surprised to learn that this author said angels are sent from the heavenly courts not to destroy God's holy angels do not destroy but Psalm 78 49 says that Satan's angels do destroy. So there's a distinct difference between God's holy angels and Satan's evil angels. Okay, that's the first 12 of 20 reasons why God doesn't destroy. And I think that's enough for today. I'm going to quit and I'll share with you 13 to 20 at another time. Let's close with a prayer. 
Dear Father in heaven, we ask that you will send this message deep into the hearts of everyone who is listening. Thank you for hearing our prayers, doing more than we can ask or think. In Christ's holy name I pray, amen.